There are 705 scheduled tribes here in India, each with their own completely unique way of life. But perhaps the most resilient of them all are the Changpa nomads of Ladakh. For the next seven days, I won't just be living with them, I'll be living like them. Eating like them, working like them, and going to the toilet like them. The one I'm gonna use to wipe my ass with is this one. Here on the world's highest inhabited plateau to see how these incredible people thrive in such an inhospitable environment and hopefully some of that resilience will rub off on me. I never ever ever thought that I would walk down a mountain with a rubble bag full of newborn puppies. I cannot physically describe to you how cold the nights are here. I woke up covered in two sheepskins and two blankets and I was still unfathomably cold. The family that I'm staying with, Sotol, she's warm, she's strong, she's welcoming, she's lovely. You've got Tam Ding who's the man of the house, he cares for his sheep, he even sleeps outside with the sheep to protect them from wolves. Namgal who's the shepherd. He spends about 12, 13 hours a day up in the up in the pastures, up in the you know, um, in the field. Then you've got Jampa, who's the reason I'm here. I met him uh, in in Lay, and uh, I told him what I was trying to do. He said, "My family are Changpa nomads. I will help you out." And then you've got Choda, who is his baby nephew, uh, who I apparently am the babysitter for. Tol, tol, tol. Toll, I guess toll is the word that you use to keep the animals moving. The Changpa's entire way of life relies entirely on the well-being and the survival of these goats. They use their milk hey, for yeah. dairy products. Uh, they use their, their wool uh, to make, well, to, to sell, which are then made into India's famous pashminas. This is where the wool comes from. Uh, and then later in life, they're used for meat. And the reason that they're, that they're nomads, that they're nomadic, is for the survival of these animals. So they take them to an area, they eat all the grass in that area, and then after three weeks or a month or so, they move their camp, they move their home to another area. Since I've left, my nomadic family have actually moved homes. I've now got to try to find my new home. Um, and I have absolutely no idea where I am. Chota, don't throw the stick at the dog. Spider-Man, you can't throw the stick at the dog, okay? I just asked my friend Jumper, what do you do when you need to go for a shit? And uh, he said, just go over there. And I said, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I said, do you use toilet paper? And he said, no, we just use rocks. Frozen. Every day with the Changpas starts exactly the same. Wake up, go and find grass. But today is different because today I'm gonna show you my favorite Tibetan nomadic Changpa weapon slash shepherding toy, the Orto. So the Orto is essentially like a sling. It's just a piece of string. You have orto? You have orto? 
Burada yersin. <gülüyor>
I spoke to a man on the way here. He thinks within two or three generations, the nomadic culture, the Changpa way of life will be completely extinct. Thank you for coughing in my face. Thank you for coughing in my face when I'm trying to make you nice and warm. It's 5.30 and it's my favorite time of day and you're about to see why. <laughs> It actually took me a few days to figure out what's, what happens at this time. Obviously, the, the animals come home and they get to put to bed. But before that, they're separated. Just by, I don't know how. Just by using the word dol. 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 And they're separated. For milking, we separate the males from the females, take all the females into the pen, give them a good old milking, and then they all cuddle up for the night. Let's see what that looks like. Tolo, outside, outside. I feel like the bouncer of a club. Get out of here. You're too pissed, you can't come in. You're too pissed, you can't come in. This one's definitely too pissed. He can't come inside. You're the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Other than you. So all along here, the goat's heads have been tied together. And we're gonna give them a good old milking every single day. Now I'm going. They won't be. Oh, I think that one's a male. Okay, so I've narrowed it down to three rocks and I think the one I'm going to use to wipe my ass with <laughs> is this one, I think. Fuck. I don't want to talk about it. Tam Ding was just telling me he has six children all over India. One in Dehradun, one in Bangalore, one here in Leh, one in uh, Dharamsala. Sucha. 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 I don't know. Sucha. Beer, beer. Thank you, brother. Yeah. I was just invited for tea in one of the local uh, family's tents and bloody Tamding was in there, my new dad basically. And I was talking to him and what I gathered was he's got six children. Not one of them will be continuing this nomadic way of life, not one of them. Four of them are studying, two of them are, are monks in Dharamshala. I am now completely aware that I am experiencing something that has existed for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that in the next generation, two max, will 100% cease to exist. Or at least cease to exist in the way that it does today. I'll tell you what's not fun. 
when your only form of transportation is a truck that won't start because it's too cold and everything's frozen. Um, and you can't stop shitting yourself every five minutes and you've got diarrhea uh, and you have to shit outside all the time. Hey! Good job. I knew it was that bloody fuel pump. I knew it was that bloody fuel pump. Oh. So today we are on our way to the uh, winter settlement for the Changpa nomads. Now, uh, in January and February, when it becomes quite literally impossible to sleep in a tent, um, the Changpas will go and live in a winter settlement in these huts. So what we're doing now is we're going to go and deliver some supplies for the winter, feed for the animals, uh, some meat that will stay good there because it's at such a high level that it will freeze. Uh, so join us as we as we take good old winter supplies to the old Changpa nomads. We also just saw two wolves uh, fairly close to our home, which we're a little bit concerned about. Big one, big one, yeah, we together. One, two, three. One, three, two, three. So what we're doing here is gathering stones from the mountains to make the, the fence for the sheep pen uh, for they stay at night time. <sighs> Haven't worked that hard in a while. On top? I'm coming to the end of my time with the Changpas. I wanted to share with you my final thoughts. Have my levels of discomfort been tested to a point I didn't think were possible? Yes. The cold, the altitude, the working in the cold and the altitude, the complete disregard to hygiene uh, and cleanliness. I, I'm, I'm not used to it. Um, and just generally not having any idea what's going on at any of the time, but that's just a, a language thing. Am I in complete and utter awe of the commitment that these people have to this way of life? A way of life that they've managed to maintain, a purely, purely nomadic way of life in 2023. These people still use every possible earthly natural resource they can for the well-being of their animals and their families they know this land like the back of their hand and i admire it and respect it so deeply would i do it again tomorrow no will i come back in a year from now to revisit some of the the deep and strong connections that i've made to the people here uh yeah i think i will but for now, I need a big old duvet and a hot shower and some toilet paper. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> I'm joking. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can you see me?
Bye bye, Chota. Bye bye, Chota. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>